Yeah, we have talked a number of times about the debanking issue. That's where financial companies deny services to customers based on their religious or political affiliations. Well, the morally bankrupt Southern Poverty Law Center recently has pushed back on our friends at the Alliance Defending Freedom, accusing them of spreading a false narrative and conspiracy theory. So we felt it was only right to have with us a voice who can respond to the so-called analysis from the SBLC. Joining me now is Jeremy Tedesco. He's a senior counsel and senior vice president of corporate engagement at Alliance Defending Freedom. Jeremy, welcome back to Washington Watch. Always great to have you. Thanks, Judy. Appreciate you having me on. All right, so where, where, where shall we begin? Uh, well, let's I mean, start. Be yeah, let's start with it. I, I, the SBLC there's, says there's a lack of evidence that debanking is even happening, and that's simply just not true, is it? Really, it's it's like responding to clown world. The, the one hand doesn't know what the other hand is doing over at SBLC's headquarters because they are one of the biggest proponents of urging financial institutions to debank people they disagree with, uh, namely Alliance Defending Freedom, where I work, uh, Family Research Council, uh, who's hosting the show, and, and several other Christian mainstream ministries um, that they disagree with, and they are actively urging financial institutions to debank us. Um, yet they come out with an article saying that we're making the whole thing up. Um, so it is, is really laughable. They really have become very much clown world over there. Um, it's hard to take them seriously, but every once in a while we respond like this uh, because, look, debanking is a serious issue. It is happening. It's on the rise. It is happening. And it's impacting Christian ministries. Absolutely. I've got a great story to share with you about that. Okay. Well, go ahead. Let's share the story because, yeah, you are so right, Jeremy. It is the SPLC, among others, but, but they are one of the major ones who are leading the charge. They are throwing fuel on the fire for debanking conservative organizations. Absolutely right. And, and, and so, you know, the idea that there's share no Share your story. I want to hear it. Yeah, the idea that there's no debanking happening it is, it is you know, obviously not true. The facts tell a different story. Our client, Indigenous Advanced Ministries, does overseas relief work in Uganda. Um, it's a Tennessee-based ministry. Back in April of 2023, they got a notice out of the blue from Bank of America, where they had banked for eight or nine years as a ministry, that their account was being canceled, that the account of a local church in Tennessee that gives to them was being canceled. Um, and the reason they gave was no reason at all. It was hiding behind vague policy terms like risk tolerance and business type disagreement. And so, you know, this this caused a huge problem for the ministry, a bigger problem for the people on the ground in Uganda where they support, because the people in Uganda don't live paycheck to paycheck. They, they live meal to meal. And so when Bank of America canceled this account out of the blue, um, it put our ministry and uh, client in Tennessee and the people they serve on the ground in serious risk of not getting the essential services, even food they needed. So, you know, that's just one example. J.P. Morgan Chase has debanked Sam Brownback and the National Committee for Religious Freedom, a religious nonprofit that supports um, religious freedom in America. Um, Chase has debanked um, numerous other organizations like the Arkansas Family Council, which is a pro-life and pro-family organization down in Arkansas because they consider them high risk. Uh, we have resources on our website that go through 12, 15, maybe up to 20 examples at this point of debanking that's going on. Now look, the banks never say, oh yeah, you got us. We debanked you because we disagree with your religion or your politics. But the thing is these debankings of religious and conservative groups are on the rise. And so it's something we're, we're paying attention to a lot at Alliance Defending Freedom. We're putting a lot of work in trying to solve the problem. Well, we all, Deeply appreciate the work that uh, ADF is doing on this. We actually had the uh, Arkansas uh, policy group on here with us, and they had no notice. I mean, all of a sudden, they were just canceled. No notice whatsoever. And uh, that, that can destroy a ministry when everything is just shut down like that. But the SP, SPLC has even directly claimed, in reference to ADF, that you are drawing on both the Christian right and white nationalist to uh, try to utilize themes therein uh, to build a case uh, of the, the government uh, trying to uh, stop 
and debank and all this kind of stuff. How do you respond to these type of wild accusations? Yeah, and it's clown world. It's 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 what they do. Those are total lies, uh, disgusting lies, but they are lies. Um, and this is what they do. They they lie about their political perceived political enemies to try to do damage to them. I mean, the response is we're concerned about debanking. Yes, because it's affecting religious and Christian institutions. But we're we're concerned about it for all Americans. It is not healthy for our society to have a financial industry that is weaponized against disfavored points of view, whether they're our points of view or somebody else's. And so we, we really want to maintain a financial system that is that is viewpoint neutral, that's not you know picking sides in the broader cultural, social, political debates that are going on. And and I think that's one thing your listeners really need to understand is there is an active, you know, intentional attempt by left-wing progressive activists, ESG activists, to capture these financial institutions and deploy them in exactly that way, as censors, you know, as people who deprive essential financial services, loans, and capital to people who aren't, you know, bending the knee to the political ideology of the left. And so we must resist this. We must call on banks to, 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 to return to principles of equal treatment, um, and, and providing services to all, regardless of their religious and political views. And I, you know, I'll point out, we are having success. J.P. Morgan Chase was one of our biggest targets and still is, but they've actually made moves in the right direction. We targeted over the last couple of years through shareholder engagement and other work, a policy at J.P. Morgan Chase called a social risk policy that included terms like hate and intolerance. They had actually used this policy to deprive certain religious organizations and political groups of payment processing services. And after our efforts to call them out on that policy and kind of their broader debanking problems at J.P. Morgan Chase, they actually dropped that policy this year. And they're in communication with us on a, on a regular basis about our concerns, and we represent the concerns of a lot of Christians and conservatives, uh, about their banking practices and their penchant to debank people that the left disagrees with. So, you know, we're making, we're making a dent. Um, we're seeing successes. Well, Jeremy Tedesco, I cannot thank you and all the great warriors there at ADF for the incredible work that you're doing on this and so many other issues. Uh, thank you so much, and thank you for coming on the program today to break this down for us. Keep the torch ablaze, my friend. We appreciate it so 